Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today we are gonna be looking at a Once Upon a Book Club box. It's been a while. I don't just have one box to share with you guys today. I don't just have two boxes to share with you guys today. I have three Once Upon a Book Club boxes to get into today. Before we get into them, I'm just gonna do a quick overview. So this subscription is about $50 a month. That does include shipping. You can get adult fiction or young adult fiction. Most of the books that I see come in this subscription box are romance or mystery and thrillers, but every now and then we will get other genres as well. Each Once Upon a Book Club box comes with a book club kit. That will include discussion questions, interview with an author, and then there will be something on the back, which is usually a recipe, a map that goes with a book, or an activity. Those are the three main things that we normally see. Of course, they could always be different. And then you will get three to five wrapped gifts for each box. Each gift will have a corresponding page number on it, so when you read to that page, you are encouraged to open it up. Let's see what all three of these boxes had to offer. Let's start with the March box. And the March theme for the adult fiction box, because that is the one I'm subscribed to, was Dangerous Fairy Tales. This is a very intriguing theme for me because I love fairy tales. The original versions, the remade Disney versions, the dark and twisty versions, which I guess were more from the original. Oh, it is the last tale of the flower bride. You get a bookmark that reminds you not to open until you read to that page. The other side will have the same quote as the quote print. This one is, in the end, a fairy tale is nothing more than a sense of hope. Interesting quote. Autograph book play. I'm not sure what this is, an advertisement for the dawn of transcendence. And today's book club kit had a recipe for Mexican hot chocolate. I love it when we get the recipes. That's my favorite thing to get. Although I do appreciate getting maps as well, especially if it is a more fantasy type book, having a map can be good to look back at while you're reading. That is the kit for this one. For the book itself, just a quick read. A sumptuous gothic infused story about a marriage that is unraveled by dark secrets, a friendship cursed to end in tragedy, and the danger of believing in fairy tales. The breathtaking adult debut from New York Times bestselling author. I love seeing debut books in here. Helps give me hope that one day my own debut book could be in here when I ever get around to writing it. Because let's be honest, I don't have a lot of time. Once upon a time, a man believed in fairy tales married a beautiful, mysterious woman named Indigo Maxwell Castianata. He was a scholar of myths. She was the heiress to a fortune. They exchanged gifts and stories and believed they would live happily ever after. And in exchange for her love, Indigo extracted a promise that her bridegroom would never pry into her past. But when Indigo learns that her estranged aunt is dying and the couple is forced to return to her childhood home, the House of Dreams, the bridegroom will soon find himself unable to resist. For within the crumbling manners, extravagant rooms, and musty halls, lurks the shadow of another girl, Azure, Indigo's dearest childhood friend who suddenly disappeared. As the house slowly reveals his wife's secrets, the bridegroom will be forced to choose between reality and fantasy, even if doing so threatens his marriage or his life. Combining the lush haunting atmosphere of Mexican Gothic with the dreamy enchantment of the invisible life of Addie LaRue, the last tale of the flower bride, is the spellbinding adult debut from New York Times bestselling author Roshini. It's a darkly romantic page turner about love and lies, secrets and betrayal, and the stories we tell ourselves to survive. All right, so that's intriguing. I don't know yet which type of fairy tale this one is inspired by, but maybe that will be revealed. Maybe it's multiple fairy tales in one. Usually when it's a fairy tale retelling, they'll tell you in the insert, and this time they really didn't tell you which one, just other than fairy tales in general. Okay, so for the gifts, page seven, page 58, page 175, and page 268. Page seven, which is at the very beginning of the book. You don't have to read very far in before you get the first present. The two drinks looked identical, a rich amber whiskey with a perfectly clear sphere of ice. Page seven has, oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Is this an ice cube maker? So you can make a round ice cube. I think that's what it must be because there's a little hole in the bottom of it 
where you could put water in and then maybe freeze it and you have a perfect round ice cube. I don't know how much practical use I'll get out of that since it does just make a singular ice cube, but okay. Next is page 58. The pages in this book do feel different than a traditional book. They're rough on the edges and they seem to be a little bit uneven. I don't know if that was on purpose or if it's just the quality of this specific book. Indigo and I sat in the dining room table half-heartedly piecing together a puzzle that she told me would become a door to the kingdom of mermaids if we finished it before midnight. That's fun. So we have a little glimpse into mermaids there. I do love the present. The flowers are gorgeous. I just want to take a picture of it. I think there might be a puzzle in here. Happiness is like those places in fairy tales whose gates are guarded by dragons. We must fight in order to conquer it. This is the print that they had inside, so I think perhaps the quote will be on the puzzle, but that's cool. That's a lot of puzzle pieces. I mean, look at all that. On the back of each puzzle is a letter and on the back of here is letters, so I guess it tells you what section of the puzzle. Or maybe it's like a little cheat sheet to tell you which puzzle piece belongs in which corner of the puzzle itself. I've never really seen that before in a puzzle, so I don't know if that's new or just something specific that they did. It is a 500 piece puzzle. It says 24 by 18 inches and fairy tales are real puzzle. Next is page 175. I had the childish notion that if I couldn't see myself, then no one else could either. My hands were full of treasures, the jar with the one rattling tooth, and the cassette tape. You're my favorite blue love lyric. I don't really understand what's going on in that scene, and that's because I haven't read the book. Oh, lyrics mixtape kitchen sponge. <laughs> okay, so it is usable because it's a sponge. It's just in the shape of a cassette tape. On the back, it says, you're my favorite shade of blue. That sounds like a Taylor Swift lyric. Usable item, I just don't know how good of an item it really is, if you know what I mean. Okay, the last one is page 268. Wrapping myself in the thick scent of green apples. Short and sweet. Maybe this has something to do with the scent of green apples. It appears to be a little perfume bottle, indigo green apple perfume. I do think that's a really pretty perfume container. Green apple is a good scent. It's one that I would probably use. Out of the four gifts, I think the puzzle is the one that's most usable for me. I will get used out of the perfume. I just don't wear perfume a lot of the times. This is a neat idea. Goes with the story. But again, it's just one single sphere cube. So maybe that's why in the book where it referenced whiskey or I think the alcoholic drink, you would only need one cube in your glass. I just don't know that I'll get a lot of use out of it, but it did go with the story. So all in all, maybe not my favorite gifts to get from Once Upon a Book Club, but the book did sound really good. I love fairy tales, and I think I will enjoy reading this tale. The April box theme was the BFF pack, which stands for Best Friend Forever Pack. Maybe this one will be about friendship. Maybe it'll be a twisted tale. So as usual, we have the book club kit. The quote this time is, you can't stop time. All you can do is point yourself in a direction and hope the wind will let you get there. That's an interesting quote. We have another insert recommending a different book. I don't know what that's recommending. Enter to win a signed copy. The book this month is called Happy Place. Hopefully it'll be a happy tale friendship. Never have I ever bookish edition. Ah, so this one had an activity on the back instead of a recipe, which is also fun to have. And then we have the book itself. This time we have a nice hardcover book. The pages are smooth. So unlike that book, it's called Happy Place by Emily Henry. I love the bright pinks and it looks like they're having a great time at the pool or the ocean or a lake or just somewhere in the water. All right, let's read a little bit about this book. Think of your happy place. Harriet and Wynne have been the perfect couple since they met in college. They go together like salt and pepper, honey and tea, lobster and rolls. Except now, for reasons they're still not discussing, they don't. They broke up five months ago and still haven't told their best friends, which is how they find themselves sharing a bedroom at the main cottage that has been their friend group's yearly getaway for the last decade. Their annual respite from the world, where for one vibrant, blissful week, they leave behind their daily lives 
have copious amounts of cheese, wine, and seafood, and soak up the salty coastal air with the people who understand them the most. Only this year, Harriet and Wynne are lying through their teeth while trying not to notice how desperately they still want each other. Because the cottage is for sale, this is the last week they'll all have together in this place. They can't stand to break their friends' hearts, so they'll play their parts. Harriet will be the driven surgical resident who never starts a fight, and Wynne will be the laid back charmer who never lets the cracks show. It's a flawless plan. If you look at it from a great distance and through a pair of sunscreen smeared glasses, after years of being in love, how hard can it be to fake it for one week in front of those who know you best? A romance type book. Those books are always really fun to read, especially in situations like this, you know, where they're forced to be together and they don't want to be together. This book only had three gifts. Page 97, 213, and 283. All right, starting with page 97. Parth and Sabrina herd us toward the register. Cleo gets her mushroom book and I buy Death by Design. It kind of sounds like they were buying books without reading more into the story. Let's see what this is. Oh, so it's a tiny little book. Murder in the Locked Library. I hardly ever see books this small anymore by Ellery Adams. This is a bonus book, so I will read the back of this insert at the end of the video for those who are interested in hearing about this bonus book. But I don't wanna read it right now and confuse the romance story that's going on with this book. Page 213 is the next one. Kimmy spikes a beach ball right at us and I dive away from when my face tingling, my smile aching, my whole body buzzing. So she mentions a beach ball. I'm thinking maybe this is a beach ball full of purpley glitter. It'll probably look really cool when it's blown up. I don't know if I want to blow it up right now. This might be something I can pack up tomorrow and take to my mom's. All right, the last one is page 283. The shower door unlatches and winds open. I hear the rasp of the towel being pulled from the hook and wrapped against skin. By the feel of this, it makes me think that it's a towel. So it's Wynn's beach towel. Makes sense. I don't think I want to unpack it right now. A beach towel is a good thing to get with a beach ball. With only the three gifts, I was hoping that one of them would be like a more pricier gift to make up for the fact that there's only three. We do have a beach towel and that can always be good quality. We do have a book, even though it's tiny, could still be a really good book. Beach balls aren't worth that much. Out of this box, I probably will get use out of all three gifts that are in here. This is a Murder in the Locked Library, permanently checked out by Ellery Adams. Welcome to Storyton Hall, Virginia, where book lovers travel from near and far to enjoy the singular comforts of the Agatha Christie Tea Room, where they can discuss the merits of their favorite authors no matter how deadly the topic. With her twins, Fitzgerald and Hemingway, back in school, Jane Stewart can finally focus on her work again, managing Storyton Hall and breaking ground on the resort's latest attraction, a luxurious, relaxing spa named in the honor of Walt Whitman. But when the earth is dug up to start laying the spa's foundation, something else comes to the surface, a collection of unusual bones and the ragged remnants of a very old book. The attendees of the Rare Book Conference are eager to assist Jane with the unexpected historical mystery until a visitor meets an untimely end in the Henry James Library. As the questions and suspects start stacking up, Jane will have to uncover a killer before more unhappy endings ensue. Definitely murder mystery, which is great. This one is the May Box, and the theme is Sleuth and the Chef. Love me a book that has food. In it. Definitely something bulging out of this box. I think maybe it didn't fit properly because they really had to tape it compared to usual. Book club kit. And the book is called Mastering the Art of French Murder. Oh my gosh, I love this book title. It is a throwback from Julia Child. Instead of mastering the art of French cooking, it's mastering the art of French murder. So this is definitely going to be a murder mystery. An American in Paris mystery by Colleen Cambridge. It could have been any of them, but it had to be one of them. Oh my gosh. Even on the side of the pages, it has a knife and then blood. <laughs> this is hilarious. This was the first of the three books to have painted edges. All right, real fast, the book club kit. So you have your bookmark. Another insert. Man, they are really promoting other books. Kingdom of Flame. Autographed book plate. Quote print this time is a recipe for the perfect murder mystery. Cup of mystery, 
one quirky detective, a sprinkle of fingerprints, a dash of deception, a splash of suspicion, three suspects, add more to taste, half cup of possible murder weapons, a fourth cup of intrigue, mix well and allow detective theories to simmer until the last page, remove from oven, and present your accusations in a dramatic final reveal. That's cute. Also has a letter from the author on the back. Of course, they all have their discussion questions and conversations with the author. And on the back of this one is more recipes. Julia Child's mayonnaise. Love it. Mastering the art of French murder. From fine Bordeaux and freshly baked baguettes to the friendly chatter of the green market, post-war Paris is indulging its appetite for food and life once more as Tabitha Knight, a young American woman, makes friends with chef in training Julia Child. Oh, and finds herself immersed in a murder most unsavory. As Paris rediscovers its, I'm not gonna be able to say this, Tabitha Knight recently arrived from Detroit for an extended stay with her French grandfather, is on her own journey of discovery. Paris isn't just the city of light, it's the city of history, romance, stunning architecture, and Food. Thanks to her neighbor and friend, Julia Child, another expat who's fallen head over heels for Paris, Tabitha is learning how to cook for her Grand Pierre and Uncle Rafi. I'm so sorry for butchering all these French words. Between tutoring Americans in French, visiting the market, and sampling the results of Julia's studies at Le Cordon Bleu cooking school, Tabitha's is proving thoroughly delightful. That is, until the cold December day, they return to Julia's building and learns that a body has been found in the cellar. Tabitha recognizes the victim as a woman she'd met only the night before at a party given by Julia's sister, Dort. The murder weapon found nearby is recognizable too, a knife from Julia's kitchen. Tabitha is eager to help the investigation, but is shocked when Inspector Mervelli reveals that a note in Tabitha's handwriting was found in the dead woman's pocket. In this murder, a case of international intrigue or something far more personal. From the shadows of the Eiffel Tower at midnight to the tiny third floor child kitchen to the grungy streets of somewhere, Tabitha the navigates to the city hoping to find the real killer before she or one of her friends ends up in prison or worse. It has a historical figure in it, someone that we know, but obviously it's fiction. So is it considered historical fiction? If it has some historical elements to it or maybe there won't be enough. Like I don't know what completely categorizes it as that. Obviously it's a murder mystery, but when you throw Julia Child in the mix and she did, you know, notably go to Le Cordon Bleu in France, in Paris. It'll be an interesting read. It's not a very long book, so maybe it won't take very long to get through. For the gifts, page 257, page 62, page 223. So another one with only three gifts, page 62 and what looks to be a poster. She flipped over the dough and continued to roll it with angry vigor then stopped abruptly and looked down at the poor pastry. So maybe it's not a poster, maybe it's a rolling pin or a mat that you roll dough on. Let's check it out. A mat, Julia's baking mat, BPA free, dishwasher safe, oven safe, up to 480 degrees. Definitely something that I'll probably get use out of. Page 223, gripping the key ring between my teeth, I held the flashlight by cupping my hand over the front of it to block the light. All right, so she mentions a key ring and she mentions a flashlight. All right, and we have a keychain. Says, follow me to the bookstore, definitely. The last gift is page 257. Oh, thank heavens, how I've missed you, dear, dear chef's knife. What an awful experience he has had, hasn't he? She gave the bag one last hug, then set it on the counter where she gave it a look of distress. I do like seeing the spoons, the knife and the fork on the wrapping paper, really cute. <laughs> So it is a set of knives, but it has writing on it, definitely making it bookish. And as long as they work good and they're nice sharp knives, they will be usable. You have a paring knife, a chef knife, and a cleaver. The cleaver is a blade heavy knife suited to more heavy duty tasks that require extra force. Chop and slice meat as well as heavier duty fruits and vegetables like squash and pineapple. I don't even think I have a cleaver. That one's gonna be new for me. I already have a chef's knife and a paring knife, but again, 
could always use more, right? That concludes all three of my Once Upon a Book Club boxes. As a recap, we have the March box, which had the last tale, the flower bride, fairy tale theme also seems to have twists and turns that are going to be in it, maybe a little bit of romance as well. We had four gifts, the puzzle, the apple perfume, the sponge cassette tape, and the ice cube maker. Over here for the April box, we have a romance book called Happy Place. It also came with a bonus murder mystery book called The Murder in the Locked Library. It also came with a beach towel and a beach ball. And then for the last one, we have Mastering the Art of the French Murder, which is a murder mystery. And it came with chef's knives, a keychain, and a baking mat. I'm really excited to read all three of these books, actually four, because I am excited to read this one too, because I love murder mysteries. It's been a while since I've sat down and read a murder mystery or a romance because in the process of completing reading Harry Potter, I still have like three chapters to go. I am kind of dragging it out because I do not like to read or watch the endings of things, but I will finish it and then I will move on. As far as the gifts go, I have several usable items that I actually will use. I'll use the knives. I'll know I'll use the baking sheet. Um, the beach ball will get used. The beach towel will probably get used. The books will get read. The puzzle will get used. I just don't know about some of the other stuff. And I am still just a little unsure as to whether or not the value of these boxes are still here. There used to be no question as to whether or not you would get your value in a Once Upon a Book Club box. And I know things have been harder with inflation, shipping cost, and all of that. And I know they've tried really hard to keep the prices of the boxes the same. I think that's why we're seeing more and more boxes with the reduced products where it's just down to three. They did always say you could get between three and five. So you were never guaranteed to have more than three. The type of products that we're getting in the boxes where there's just three, the value isn't always there. I mean, these baking mats are not very expensive and neither are keychains. Now the quality of the knives may be good. They may be great and it may help cover the cost of this box. But with this one, you have a beach towel, which maybe could have been the more pricier item, but beach balls are not very expensive. And the book, while it does have value, I don't know that it's worth $20. You know, over here you did have four gifts. The puzzle, in my opinion, was the best one. Then you have the green apple perfume, which is good, but it's also limited. I don't think everybody would like the scent of green apple perfume. The sponge is also usable, but it's very random. And then same thing with the ice cube thing. Usable, but random. And will you use it? I don't know. I still love Once Upon a Book Club. I'm still gonna get it. It's one of the book boxes that I am keeping and will still continue to get for a little while now. Now, if you put it in terms of the cost of the box, I know it is $50, but technically about 15 of that is the price of shipping. So at least you're not having to pay $50 plus an additional 15 to $20 for shipping. So the actual value of the box itself, they value at about $35. And with that, it becomes more reasonable when you have a brand new book, which could be about 20 bucks, and then $15 worth of items. You can make your own choices when it comes to this box, but I still love Once Upon a Book Club. I still think it's worth getting. I love the surprises you get when you do it correctly. When you get this box, I do recommend you actually reading it until you get to that page. It makes it a lot more exciting. Let me know down below which one was your favorite the March, April, or May box down in the comments below. Which books would you be interested in reading? I'm okay with reading all of them. I love that we have a variety of different genres. They're all different. I don't know which one I'm gonna read first. Maybe the romance, because it's been a really long time since I've read a romance book, but then I'll circle back to these two. You let me know your thoughts down below, and I will be back soon. Bye, everyone.